good evening and greetings to all i am really thankful to all our participants uh, all the resource personnel all uh, my co faculty for uh, the workshop and uh, i'm sure that uh, most of you must have benefited out of it and uh, there were certain comments about uh, making some videos and it's been a long time since we posted anything on our youtube channel so uh, uh, yesterday i took help from dr priya darshini my pg student and also uh, my colleagues and we put up certain plates uh, which are a routine ast plates and we have put up certain uh, extra tests that you must have witnessed during the workshop so we'll just uh, show you how on a daily basis you can do the interpretive reading and how that can be confirmed or uh, you can say substantiated on the basis of certain inhibitors and certain inducers of the different enzymes uh, when it comes to your esbls and amcs because that's quite a confusion so there have been multiple videos on the youtube channel uh, regarding uh, mc beta lactamases but this is going to be a purely uh, uh, lab based uh, demonstration act of the actual plates how you can suspect and when the amc is hiding the esbl and when the esbl is hiding the amc most of you already have seen it in the workshop but i'll just show it to you once again so let's go to the lab so good evening to all of you and uh, this workshop just got over and we got certain uh, uh, feedbacks and comments saying that we need to make a few videos about the daily ast plates and so i am here being uh, in the lab only which uh, most of you have visited and i am being uh, helped and assisted by my pg student dr priyadarshini who's holding the camera right now so we'll just uh, uh, review these plates these are the daily ast plates that we had shown you this is a daily ast plate that you can see over here this is a e coli isolate from urine and it is showing a nice zone in imipenem peptazo meropenem cefoxetin and as you can see over here cefotaxim and cefotaxim clab are the same in size and cefepime is also gone but you can see here there is a synergy between cefotaxim and meropenem there some synergy is there and uh, uh, the, the the important part is that there is uh, no difference between cefotaxim and cefotaxim clab and at the same time if you see over here uh, this side also we've got amikacin is susceptible genta is susceptible nitro cotri phosphomycin is susceptible norflox is gone so we don't have cefepime is also gone over here so cefepime gone means that means some sort of esbl is there over here and at the same time because uh, if we talk about interpretive reading i told you that cefotaxim clab and this clab is suicidal for the third generation cephalosporin because it is inducing the amc beta lactamase over here and is breaking down the cefotaxim and therefore that zone it should have been large over here because esbl is present this zone should have been bigger over here that is reduced at the same time tazobactam is not an inducer so therefore tazobactam is still peptazo is still susceptible cefoxetin is susceptible so you might think that okay uh, i told you also that cefoxetin susceptible isolates are also there so let us see if we try to unmask this what happens so what we did over here was that <clears throat> this is a plain cefotaxim over here this is cefotaxim plus boronic acid this cefotaxim clab this cefotaxim clab plus boronic acid this is cefoxetin this is cefoxetin plus boronic acid and in the center we have got amoxy clab so as you can see that there is a uh, between cefotaxim and cefotaxim clab there is some sort of uh some sort of uh, increment is there but like i said uh for the total and complete breakdown of cefotaxim you need at least two enzymes which are commonly esbls and amcs so as you can see over here you might think that uh you know there's something wrong this is only esbl and it is not possible to explain this uh, non increment of cefotaxim clab uh in the presence of cefotaxim so if we go back to this plate over here you can see that cefotaxim clab boronic acid is here and amoxy clab is there so there is some synergy over here you can see some synergy is there and between cefotaxim and amoxy clab also some synergy is present so the synergy means like i said is the synergy means esbl but at the same time this synergy is smaller than this synergy that indicates that the boronic acid over here and is uh, inhibiting certain uh, beta lactamase and that's why the synergy is increasing similarly clab over here is also 
both clav and boronic acid clav is, is inhibiting the esbl boronic acid is inhibiting the your amc beta lactamase and therefore this synergy size is slightly bigger in size but at the same time if you come to this disc over here this is quite strange you might think that the cefotaxime clav and boronic acid should all increase in size but over here cefotaxime is a substrate clavulinic acid is inhibiting the esbls but at the same time the clav is also inducing the amc beta lactamase and the boronic acid is inhibiting the amc beta lactamase so there are multiple things happening over here so you can see there is no difference between these two reason probably being that clav despite uh, the inhibiting the esbls is also uh, you know uh, stimulating the amc beta lactamase and the de repression is happening and that re repression has is not allowing this zone size to further increase at the same time over here you see cefoxidin and cefoxidin boronic acid you see cefoxidin is uh, in the resistant uh, zone but if you the moment you add boronic acid it is coming as susceptible so this is most likely a inducible amc and along with an esbl so that is u49 if we go to the next one that is our u50 over here as you can see again uh in this one in u49 again i'll just show you in u49 this is u49 okay so this is cefepime and we have added boronic acid over here so there is some inhibition is present so cefepime resistance means there is esbl but the moment you added boronic acid that is still resistant but it is unmasking the effect of the amc beta lactamase which is why i said that both the enzymes are present some inhibition is there so that is u49 if you go to u50 over here that's also very interesting case now see <coughs> if you see imipenem zone is in the borderline or maybe resistant meropenem is nicely susceptible peptazo is also nicely susceptible but cefotaxime is resistant at cefotaxime clav is a huge zone so that means if you don't if you had not put up cefoxidin over here you might have landed up saying that this is plain simple esbl but in this case esbl is masking the amc beta lactamase by which you can see the effect on cefoxidin cefoxidin is resistant cefepime is also gone so that means this if you do if you don't look at cefoxidin over here you might just think that this is a say, plain simple esbl because cefoxidin zone is very less cefotaxime clav zone is huge so that increment shows that probably esbl but the moment you look at this you'll see that this is also amc beta lactamase producer and if you go to uh, the plate that is put up over here that is u50 plate you can see cefotaxime is gone but like i said there is some synergy between cefotaxime and amoxiclav some synergy is present so probably like i said synergy indicates esbl so that means there is some esbl is present over here also you can see between this is the cefot the uh, cefotaxime plus boronic acid along with amoxiclav and you can see a huge synergy over here much bigger than this so that again indicates that there are two enzymes present one is being inhibited by boronic acid which is the amc the other being inhibited by clav which is the esbl and so over here also i don't know if you can make out or not but between cefoxidin and cefoxidin boronic acid there is some scantier growth if you can close up you can see a difference between this and this this is slightly a scanty growth around the cefotaxime boronic acid disc so also showing the presence of a esbl and amc and if you had not put up this cefoxidin then you would have definitely made a mistake of ruling it as a plain simple esbl and this is you would have missed out on the amc beta lactamase so that is u49 and u50 isolates let's move on to the next isolates which are our daily isolate daily plates we are looking like this so let us see at this one this is yes this is u24 this is u24 sample number so you can see epenem is susceptible Cryptazo is probably in the intermediate zone, maybe around 23, 24 or something. Meropenem is still susceptible. Cefoxidin is gone. Cefepime is gone. Cefotaxime and cefotaxime clav. So you see, cefotaxime clav has got some zone is there, but cefotaxime is totally gone. And I like said that normally the complete breakdown of third generation cephalosporin is never caused by a single enzyme. Usually there are two enzymes present. So what do we do in this case? We will try to unearth what is present. so if you see the other plate it is nicely susceptible to to phosphomycin and as usual phosphomycin will always have some in growth inside we have to avoid this in growth and take the full zone it's susceptible to the amine glycosides and to nitrofurantoin also so if you see the plate for u24 that we have put up so this was put up by uh, priyadarshini so you can see amoxiclav in the center 
This is U24 amoxiclave in the center. Cefotaxime over here. This is cefotaxime boronic acid. So like I said, cefotaxime and amoxiclave, there is a synergy you can see clearly, which is smaller than a synergy between amoxiclave and cefotaxime boronic acid discs. So this increased zone of synergy that indicates that again the boronic acid is also inhibiting the AMC beta lactamase and the clav is also inhibiting the ESBL. So that is why this is a also a co-producer. And again, if you see, this is cefotaxime plus clav. So this is plain cefotaxime, this is cefotaxime and clav. So there is some increase in size over there, like you saw in the primary plate. You saw between cefotaxime and cefotaxime clav, there is some increase in size, but not much. So coming back over here, this fourth disc that you have put up, that is cefotaxime plus clav plus boronic acid. So you can see there is a sequential increase in the zone diameter. This contains both. So this is again, uh, I would say maybe this is a not an inducible, but this is a constitutive AMC beta lactamase, probably a plasmid mediated AMC beta lactamase because uh, had it been a uh, inducible AMC beta lactamase, this cefotaxime plus clav plus boronic acid zone would have been much smaller like we showed in the previous plates because of the induction caused by clav in this particular disc. So this is cefotaxime plus clav plus boronic acid much bigger in size. So probably this is a not an inducible but a constitutive AMC beta lactamase present on the plasmid. And if you see the plate put up over here, again you can see this is plain cefepime, cefepime plus boronic acid. There is very, a very minor uh, increment of, uh, you can say the growth is scanty over here, you can't make out very clearly, you can see the plate over here, then you can make out just like that. So this is the U24, coming to the third plate, that is our U35. So if you see the routine plate of our U35, again same thing you'll see, cefotaxime is totally gone, cefotaxime clav, there is some increment is there, cefepime is gone, cefoxidine is probably around 18 to 20, so it's coming as susceptible. So you might again think that this is some increment is there, so this is, could be an ESBL. And because cefepime is also gone, so again you would think it's an ESBL. But what is happening over here? If you see again, if you see this extra plate that we have put up over here for U35, again same issue. This is cefotaxime, this is amoxiclav, you can see a nice synergy over here, so that means ESBL is there definitely. But the synergy between cefotaxime, boronic acid and amoxiclav is much bigger in size as compared to the plain cefotaxime and amoxiclav synergy. So again indicating that boronic acid is inhibiting the AMC beta lactamase over here and clav is inhibiting the ESBL so therefore the synergy between both of them is much bigger than the synergy between plain this thing. And if you see this is probably uh, like I said this is again same thing this is a uh, inducible AMC probably on, a, on, a, on the chromosome because if you see the primary plate over here so it's possible that this cefotaxime clav, in this clav, the clav could be inducing the AMC beta lactamase. So instead of being increased in size, uh, that would have been otherwise caused by a plain, uh, uh, caused by the inhibition of the ESBL by the clav. The AMC is getting activated over here by the clav, therefore the zone size is not increased and remained very small. Same thing is over here also. If you don't see an increase in the size like this, which you saw in the previous plate, for example, over here, you saw the increase in size, cefotaxime, cefotaxime boronic acid, cefotaxime clav, cefotaxime plus clav plus boronic acid. So this increment is not happening here. This increment is not happening because that one was a constitutive, uh, uh, constitutive or a plasmid mediated ESBL that is constantly, sorry, plasmid mediated AMC beta lactamase that has been constitutively being expressed, whereas this is a, a chromosomal AMC which is getting induced by the boronic acid over here and despite the presence of the clav, uh, which should have inhibited the ESBL, there is no zone because clav is also inducing uh, so much so that boronic acid is not able to uh, uh, inhibit the, that AMC beta lactamase. Similarly, if you see, there is a modest increase between cefoxidine and cefoxidine boronic acid over here. That's very typical over here. If you go to the next plate, <coughs> that is our uh, P33. This is P33, again a routine AST plate if you see. <clears throat> in the routine AC plate, again same issue is there, cefotaxime uh, is gone, cefotaxime clav and cefotaxime bo zones both are the same, ampicelbatum is gone but I won't ampicelbatum too much because there are some issues with the AC testing, I won't trust ampicelbatum uh, on a daily basis but you have to check the QC very carefully 
Peptazo is, got, is uh, very much sensitive. Uh, Meropenem is susceptible. Cefoxidin is also susceptible. So again, you might think this is probably just an ESBL, but this seems to be a inducible AMC because of the same issue what happened in the previous plate. At the same time, if you see Cefepime over here, Cefepime is gone. So you might think that this is a ESBL as well. So looking at Cefotaxime and Cefepime, you might think it's ESBL. But if you see the Cefotaxime clap zone, the same as Cefotaxime, so most likely this is a again a inducible AMC beta lactamase. So this is P33. So if I see the plate over here, this one, this is again is P33. So this is Cefepime plus Cefepime and boronic acid. So this plain Cefepime is there. So the ESBL has broken down the Cefepime, but over here. The boronic acid is inhibited the um, C beta lactamase and it is creating some zone over here despite the presence of ESBL. So that means some uh, inhibition is being, has been is gone and that's why it is able to produce something. So this is our 33. So this is the other plate, the main plate that we have put up. So if you can see over here, again, <coughs> same thing. Cephotaxime, Cephotaxime boronic acid, Cephotaxime clav, Cephotaxime clav plus boronic acid. So again, there is a increase in the zone size. So I have my doubts whether this is an inducible AMC beta lactamase or this is a plasmid mediated AMC beta lactamase. As per uh, what we can see on this plate, this seems to be a plasmid mediated AMC beta lactamase because induction had induction been there, then the clav over there would have induced the AMC beta lactamase and therefore this zone just would not have increased. So probably if you look at this increased zone size, you probably think that this might be a uh, 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 you can say plasmid mediated or a constitutively expressed AMC beta lactamase over here. Then if you go to the next plate over here, we can see this is our, this is very clear cut. This is no doubt about that. This is very clear cut. Uh, as you can see over here, very clear cut. Cephotaxim zone is big in size. At the same time, Cephotaxim clav is totally gone. Epenem is inducing this D zone formation over here. And in Piptazo also, okay, you can see a D-zone formation. You can see very clearly. So that is a very classical uh, AMC beta lactamase. And if you see, uh, where is uh, Cephepime? Cephepime is there somewhere? Uh, Cephe eh, yes, there Cephepime is here. Cephepime is huge in size. So this is nicely. So there is no uh, ESBL over here. There is only AMC present. Had the ESBL been there, then Cephepime would have gone. So that means you have to keep this in mind that you have to put up so, Emipenem in the center, Cephotaxime, Cephotaxime clav, Piptazo, Meropenem, Cephoxidin, and Cephepime. At least these uh, uh, these seven discs should be put up so that you can unearth this particular enzyme. So, this is our isolate number 65. If you go back over here, again you see this is plain Cephotaxime. Uh, this is, like I said, this is inducible AMC, this is chromosomal, right? So, this is Cephotaxime. There is no synergy over here. As you can see, there is no synergy. No synergy means ESBL is not there. Had there been some synergy, we would have thought of some ESBL, but there is no ESBL because there is no synergy. This is plain Cephotaxime. This is Cephotaxime plus boronic acid. As you can see, there is an increase in the zone size. Cephotaxime plus clav. Clav has induced AMC. Therefore, the Cephotaxime clav is smaller than Cephotaxime. And same is happening over here. There is a battle between boronic acid and and Cephoxid and uh, your uh, clavulinic acid. Boronic acid is trying to inhibit the AMC, whereas clav is trying to stimulate or derepress the AMC beta lactamase. So that's why you can not see a very clear increase in zone size. In fact, there are some mutants which are growing inside. These are probably the derepressed mutants. So they can, they may be partial or complete derepression might be there. So that is uh, for the U65. Again, you can see. Cephepime, this is plain Cephepime, this is Cephepime plus boronic acid. So that means there is some increase in size because of the AMC beta lactamase created by this. With that, I think you should be able to understand the basics about AMCs and ESBLs. Thank you so much. So if you see these two plates, this is uh, U65, U65, this is U24, U24. 65 was your uh, E. coli, right? And 24 is also E. coli, both are E. coli. Now if you see very carefully over here, I wanted to compare these plates together. Why? Because uh, if you see the primary plate over here, Epenem zone size is pretty big in size. Uh, again, Cephotaxime is gone, Cephotaxime clav is gone, Cephepime is gone, Cephoxetin is, is like it is resistant. But Miro is, is, uh, is still sustaining. Peptazo is you can see in the intermediate zone. So, but if we put up this plate over here, Cephotaxime and Amoxiclav, for the moment you see the synergy, 
the moment you see synergy you should think that yes this is an esbl but is there amc yes amc is there because you can see the increase in so uh, the synergy size between cefotaxime and amoxiclav cefotaxime boronic and amoxiclav you can clearly see this synergy is smaller this synergy is much bigger and if we the, see the incremental zone cefotaxime cefotaxime boronic acid cefotaxime plus clav is this inducible or non inducible so let us check out by adding boronic acid so this is clearly increasing in size so that means this is a constitutively present or a constitutively uh, expressed uh, ES, uh, amc beta lactamase had it been a inducible amc beta lactamase this entire thing would have gone so i'll just shift to this plate over here this is again is e coli so normally we would have seen that in e coli we do have uh 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 the chromosomal amc beta lactamase but for quite long time literature was existing that e is uh, e coli do not have inducible amc they do have amc on they do have chromosomal amcs but they did, did not have the induction mechanism so where does this induction mechanism come from let's see so this is identified as e coli on our maldi and as you can see cefepime zone size pretty big and cefotaxime zone is there at the same time amipenem is inducing resistance in cefot in, uh, in cefotaxime d zone formation is here and in peptazo also some flattening is also happening over here and cefotaxime clav is totally gone so that means clav over here is inducing the amc and therefore it is decreasing in size now what happens if you see this is a clearly a case of a chromosomal amc that was a case of esbl plus a uh, your say plasmid mediated amc beta lactamase this is purely a chromosomal amc beta lactamase and like i said the moment you start adding cefotaxime there is no synergy between between cefotaxime and amoxiclav you add cefotaxime plus boronic acid there is an increase in size because the inhibition of the amc and at the same time there is no synergy between cefotaxime boronic acid and amoxiclav however if you see cefotaxime clav this is totally gone and this is very interesting if you see the tiny colonies you can focus over here if you can see the tiny colonies inside and near this disc that indicates that these are the partially derepressed uh, mutants of e coli uh, which have got stimulated in the presence of clav however boronic acid is also trying to inhibit so there is a battle going on over here between the inhibition by boronic acid and stimulation by the uh, uh, by the uh, uh, your clavulinic acid and you see the tiny colonies over here you'll see these are tiny colonies are the d repressed mutants so that's the difference between our inducible amc beta lactamase which is displayed and the constitutively expressed amc beta lactamase in the presence of an esbl